Hello folks and welcome to the first on water performance review of 2022. This is the Atoll 11 board and these are my first impressions. We're located right now at a small little lake in Salt Spring Island. I'll correct it when I know. Yeah, I'll let you know my impressions, including me trying to stand on this board in March and go from there. All right, guys, welcome to the Atoll 11 on water performance test. So let's stand on this baby. Have your paddle like this away from your water. Two. In a squat motion. There you go. Bring it down so you can see the board. So the stability of the board is pretty good. Like I don't feel any weird correcting or that I need to do with my feet. Now we're gonna do the tracking of the board. So we're gonna paddle moderate strokes. And we're gonna see how long for each side paddle the board starts to correct. So let's see, one, two, three, I must say, for its spin setup, I'm actually kind of surprised that it tracks as well as it does. The board, its two support fins are plastic and they're mounted onto the board instead of iRocker and Nixie that are fins that you can detach. Now we're just gonna do some simple maneuverability strokes. So just some little simple side strokes, kind of like this. Feels pretty stable throughout. Start paddling. Now, the big question is, how will this board feel during a sweep stroke? So let's find out. pretty steady throughout just very minimal correcting I have to do like I find with the Nixie board that I have sometimes there's little su just sudden little little corrections you have to use with your feet but this for the most part felt like a pretty stable platform to stand on while you're doing that as you can kind of see down there I have some friends that are visiting me I'll call them Gary and Lisa they seem sort of chill. Oh, he's looking at me. Okay, maybe I'm in their territory, so we'll just take a little correcting turn here. Don't want to get attacked by geese today. <laughs> There's also swans you can kind of see down there, which is pretty interesting. All right, now we are going to do a speed test to that dock right over there and try not to disturb the swans. So let's go. Starting from a standstill. I'm not gonna be pushing too hard because it's like in the middle of March. I don't really wanna fall in. So we're just doing like fairly standard strokes, sort of powerful strokes, but again, it's like the middle of March and we're in Canada here. So don't want too much crazy things to happen here, you know? So my initial thoughts are, I do like the how the touring profile of the board, well, hybrid touring profile of the board, kind of makes it a little bit easier as you're paddling. Oh, sorry guys. Okay. I think I may have scared them. It's my bad. Um, anyway, sorry, little disturbance here. The tracking, even speed-wise, 
it's good, but it's not as good as iRocker Nixie, especially if you're paddling with harder strokes. Now there's a loop I noticed when I was on my knees on this board that the wind kind of upsets this board's performance a little bit more than other boards I've tested. See, now we're paddling against the wind. But we are getting to that dock. Okay, so we made it to the dock. We just paddled a little bit further out there. And as I was doing those harder strokes in the water, I did find this, the board was still pretty stable. Like I didn't feel like there's unnecessary tipping points like I found in like the tower yachtsman. But it performed pretty good. As I was saying before, the tracking is not as good as iRocker or Nixie. And that's because the supporting fins on this board, like I said, are attached. So they're, I think they're like four inches while the ones from iRocker and Nixie believe they're like 5.5 inches. So that little bit does add to the tracking. But this board is also a little bit cheaper than those boards whenever it's high season. So my initial on water impressions are that this is, you know, honestly a really good board. I like it, especially for the price you pay. Cause I believe this retails for about $6.99 US. Well, the Nixie eye rocker, they go for around $7.99, $8.50-ish, sometimes $8.99. So there's not a huge performance drop off whatsoever. And like I said, I do really like the stability of this board. It's definitely better than any Amazon board I've tried. Like stability is about the same for me as Serene Life, but you can motor in this thing way better. And I'm sure you could pack it up with a lot more gear just because it's built better. So what are my impressions of the Atoll 11? I would say that stability wise, it is right up there with iRocker 11. I feel like this board is often compared a lot to the iRocker all around 11. And they do, they both do a really good job of being stable in the water. Tracking, I'd give an edge to iRocker just because of the fin setup, but I believe that you can load this board up with a little bit more gear. And I do like that this board has 15 D rings, which means I, if you're a fisherman, you can strap a nice little cooler onto the back. Uh, we're definitely gonna do some more on water tests with this board in coastal conditions. One last thing I forgot to talk about is the paddle. So what do I think of the paddle? give you a little close-up view right here if you looked at my on water performance video of the tower you may notice that this paddle is very similar now I suspect that the people who make the paddles they got it from the same factory don't quote me on that I don't know but overall the paddle is good it's a bit heavier than the Nixie and the iRocker paddle, but it's not a deal breaker. It's definitely better quality than the Serene Life paddle because it's not aluminum. It's made of carbon fiberglass with sort of a composite finish, so you can kind of see. So yeah, the paddle's pretty good. So would I buy this as a first board? Yeah, absolutely. It might clock in a little more expensive than the Amazon board, but I think that this is a great pick. And stability wise, like I'm pretty cautious because it's in the middle of March and <laughs> the water is pretty cold. So I don't really want to fall in. But as soon as I stood on here, like it felt about a stable uh, platform as I've really felt on a paddle board. So yeah, in, in those areas, big thumbs up. The only downside I'd say that I think iRocker, or sorry, that Atoll 11 
could use is they could use some mounting points. Just like how Nixie or iRocker have. If you have little mounting points, you could put things like rod holders. So like these boards usually have the mounting points there and then usually right up there. But I mean, it's not a massive con per se. Like again, there's 15 D rings with this paddle board. So you still have a lot of, a lot of customizability, especially if you got coolers.